All right, if you haven't seen the video that I made in the past revealing how much I made as a regional airline pilot, then I think you should go check that out before you watch this video so that you can actually appreciate this video even more. After you've gone to watch that video, then you can come back to watch this one. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm gonna assume that you've gone to see that video and now you have an understanding of where I am coming from. In the previous video, I actually got a lot of comments from people saying things that I felt they didn't really understand the point of that video when I reviewed how much I actually made. The point of that video wasn't to complain about how much I made, it was actually to show how I was able to make a little bit of, mon of money and still be able to survive and save money and all of that, which was the reason for that video. So I hope you stay to the end of this video so that you can understand the point of this video even more. Two things I'd like to clear right away are the term regional airline and a mainline airline or a major airline. I would use the word mainline or major airline interchangeably so please understand that they mean the same thing. Regional airlines operate from areas with less demand to a point where they can connect passengers to a main or a major airline uh, flight. So a good example would be short ops from you know point A to point B where B being the hub and that's where you know most of the flights would then depart to their final destination. So for this reason, regional airlines will generally operate smaller airplanes from one point to the other. On the contrary, a major airline would operate bigger airplanes and they are classified into two categories. You have the wide body airplanes and the narrow body airplanes. Generally speaking, a wide body airplane is used to operate internationally or long flights depending on demand and capacity of course. Narrow body airplanes operate mid range to long range flight. Now the other thing I need to shed more light on is this. The revenue generated on a bigger airplane generally means more money to be made and also more money to be paid and more responsibility of course for those pilots as well. So it kind of makes sense that there will be a wide range in how pilots are paid. Before 2016 pilots at the regional level made around $18 an hour starting out to somewhere around $28, $30 an hour. Because a regional airline pilot makes about $18 an hour, doesn't necessarily mean that they have an eight hour schedule like a normal job would. For example, if you clock in at your job, you're there for eight hours, you get paid eight hours, but it doesn't work like that for pilot. The way it works is pilots only get paid once the airplane starts moving, generally from pushback up until they block in or they park at the gate at the destination. That's what they get paid for. So a good example of this is, let's assume that a pilot operates three flights in one day and they are scheduled to be on duty for let's say 10 hours. Those three flights in total, in terms of what they actually would fly from when they push back to when they block in, those hours may not be more than four hours, which means even though they've been on duty for 10 hours, what they actually get paid for is four hours. You see where this can be difficult if you're only making $18 an hour. The goal of a regional pilot is to start with a regional as a first officer and within a year or two, move to the left seat as a captain on that airplane. And the goal of every captain at a regional, generally speaking, is to get some experience, get some PIC time, and move on to a major airline where they tend to make more money, better benefits, better schedules, and things of that nature. Starting out as a first officer, you're only making about $18 an hour, but then once you move into the left seat, you tend to make a little bit more money, generally three times of that amount back then. So the goal was always to spend as little time as possible in the right seat you, so that you can move to the left seat, make a little bit more money, and be able to live a little better life, and of course, be able to move on to a major airline. Now the time it takes to get the necessary experience for a regional first officer to move to the left seat is generally about two years, as you mean they're working you know, regularly and they're flying, to take about a year and a half to two years to move from the right seat to the left seat in an ideal environment. And I stress that word ideal because when the environment is no longer suitable, what happens is that the pilots in the right seat that's only supposed to be there for about a year to two years can be there for four years and even longer. Between year 2000 and 2010, there were a lot of economic events that took place. Starting from year 2000, the dot-com bubble, moving on to 2001, the 9-11, moving on to oil prices that was skyrocketing due to the war, and then moving on to 2008, the housing market bubble. All of these events created a perfect storm for the aviation industry. What ended up happening was all those pilots that were hired in a regional were unable to move on to the left seat to become captains and those captains in the left seat already were unable to get hired because the economy was already tanked the airlines were not hiring they were even packing airplanes and some of them were shutting down and also pilots were followed so what ended up happening was a lot of people that were hired as first officers were stuck in the right seat 
for about three to six years or even more making between $18 an hour to $30 an hour. Come 2011 when the economy started turning around again and airlines started you know to hire gradually what happened was it wasn't that they were hiring from just the public they were actually just picking back up on the people that they followed in order for any airline to hire they need to first of all recall all the pilots that they followed and after they've done that and if they need more pilots then they start to hire from 2010 to about 2016 there wasn't a lot of hiring going on all that was really happening was more recalls for pilots in the major airlines now in 2016 at this point the airlines were already done recalling most of their pilots the economy was growing again they were buying more planes and there was a lot of expansion in industry the regionals started to lose more pilots to the major airlines but the pay was still around you know 18 dollars to 24 dollars and about $30 at the most at the time. These regionals started to attract pilots by increasing pay. When that wasn't even enough to attract enough people, they started giving out bonuses and the bonus would range from maybe five grand sign on bonuses to around 50 grand at the most at that time. Now you have to remember that due to the 10 year period where there was no movement in industry, a lot of people that were followed did not even return even though they got recalled by their airline most of them didn't return to flying because first of all they weren't going to make enough money they were not happy with what was going on in the industry and they didn't really see the need to go back so a lot of people were already discouraged come 2018 2019 all these airlines regionals especially especially began to really suffer from you know lack of crew because at this point there were no guys in the pool to get hired like it used to be before you know things turned upside down but of course at this point regionals were already feeling the hurt and they started to even increase pay even more in 2019 it was already hitting the news that there is a lack of pilot to operate airplanes but guess what happened again we had the c word which i'm not going to mention in 2020 that led to a decline in the economy and the economy shutting down but guess what the airlines will end up doing because of all the financial gurus and all the aviation experts, they claim that the aviation industry would not turn around until maybe 2024, 2025. And due to that reason, a lot of airlines ended up following pilots and even giving what they call the early retirement packages to pilots to let them retire early and just let them go because there won't be need for them for years to come. So they thought. So you gotta remember, now that we have the pilot shortage prior to this event, and now they even laid off more pilots or followed a lot of pilots, what ended up happening was by late 2021, things started opening up in the economy and a lot of airlines started hiring again, started recalling their pilots. But by mid 2022, of course, there wasn't enough pilots to fill the seat. And this led to a lot of flight cancellations, and even some airlines shutting down because they couldn't fill the seats and have those pilots operate the airplane. So what do these regionals do? Because especially this is at the regional level. They had no choice but to bump up the pay. As we speak now, pilots at the regional level are actually making close to about hundred dollars an hour which is mind-blowing to me considering what i made when i started as you mean you've watched that video you understand what i'm saying the other thing also is these regional airlines are paying crazy amount of bonuses giving very very good incentives to attract pilots to their airline now this is all about demand and supply when demand is high and the supply is low then prices would go up which is what has happened to pilots now now we don't know how long this is going to last and also the important thing is some of these originals only signed like a temporary agreement to bump up the pay. Now, when things start to cool off, I don't believe that, you know, the wages would drop significantly. If, you know, if it drops, it's not going to be as low as what it used to be back in 2016, of course. You can check out my other video about how much I made as an airline pilot. The other thing also is all I ask.